I have reviewed so many AI tools on this channel, but there's only really a few that I reckon you would use every single day as a researcher. The first one is, and I'm sorry to do this to you, it's so obvious, but I'm gonna share with you how I use it the most. It's ChatGPT+. Now, the reason I like Plus is because you get access to the GPT-4 model, and I have just found that this is just the best overall, like non-complicated, it doesn't go out to the internet, which kind of helps in a way because I feed it information and say, hey, work with this information. It can be when I'm writing, it can be if I'm looking for a summary of something, it can be even if I wanna create a table of data um, that would take me otherwise ages to format. And so I use it in combination with text blaze. I've got read and say read, write and edit, wrapping up, introduction, I've got one for YouTube, I've got one for learning Persian, um, I've got Instagram, I've got all of the stuff that I normally use and I just sort of like go in and I say, hey, read this. This is the first way I, I, read, I say, hey, read. And then I use text plays, I go in here and then I say, hey, read all this text. Now, based on that text, here's the things I want you to do with it. It just works. Now, GPT-4 recently came up with Code Interpreter and uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I really like it. I use it all the time for extracting stuff from Excel documents. I use it all the time for turning stuff into Excel documents. I say, hey, here's a load of information. Can you just tabulate that for me? And it does it so well, it puts it into Excel. And obviously if you're a researcher dealing with lots of data, pulling it in from different sources, formatting it differently can be a massive pain in the bum. And so ChatGPT, I'm sorry, it's a bit boring boring, but that's probably one I use every single day. If I want to get a little bit more sciency, I highly recommend using Site Assistant. It is in Beaton. I don't know if they're ever going to charge for this, but ultimately it does a wide range of different sciency and researcher things. I really like that you can ask simple questions and get full text from millions of research articles. I like that it can help you with writing and I like that it can, um, you know, help you effectively use information to support your research tasks. I'm just reading that there like a loser. And I really like that it can, you know, go find a source for something. So overall, if you need to do something a little bit more sciencey, I'd recommend Sight at the moment. Um, but you know, these AI tools are changing all the time and there may be one coming out that's a little bit better. Watch this space. All right, so like I said, I quite often feed stuff into ChatGPT, but sometimes I reach that like character limit where it says, oh no, no, you've put too much in, try again, regenerate the uh, conversation. And so if I get into that situation, my go-to is Hey GPT. I really use this probably every day in some form because it gives me the ability to chat with audio, chat with YouTube, chat with websites, and you can select a load of different websites. You put them in here, you select select them. Um, you can also chat with files. You can also go out to Google as well. I just use this if I feel like I come to the edge of ChatGPT's input. Then I say, hey, here's a load of files. Now they're stored locally and they're stored temporarily, but that is normally all I want to do with all of the information I'm feeding into ChatGPT. I very rarely um, have needed to sort of like store a vectorized amount of data in say uh, pine cones or something like that. So really, it's just the simple, easy to use web interface stuff that I'm really focused on on a daily basis. Now, I'm not an active researcher right now, but I still find myself using Elicit nearly every single day. It's all of those little things that pop into my head where I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is this way. And I can ask actual science and get information. I love that it's free. You can upload your own PDFs. And interestingly, they've just come up with a new version of Elicit that I've been trialing uh, and it's got some sort of benefits. My biggest benefit, I think, is the fact that you can add your own library. You can add add a load of papers here. You can see I've put up my own papers here and you can ask them questions. So you go to workflow and you say, get a table of your concepts synthesized from research and the literature, extract information from PDFs, find scientific research papers. So all of this can be done. Um, it does cost money. They give you 5,000 free credits to start with and you can buy more stuff. But uh, you know, they're slowly working on, I think, what researchers would want to do with their own PDFs. Importantly, getting their own PDFs and saying, hey, extract the information from these. And then you can say, I want to add columns. I want to know 
the summary. You say create a summary column, save, and then a summary column pops up, and then here we are. That is all of the stuff that uh, has been extracted from these papers, and it does eat into your credits. But to be honest with you, the free version of Illicit is just perfect, the OG of the AI science world. I really feel like this is, uh, you know, just a fantastic thing to use every single day while you're doing your research. Question pops into your mind, you can find evidence-backed answers, and it's just so easy. You don't even need to pay, love it. The next thing I find myself doing once I actually get the research article, say I get one article, is I like to go and look at the derivative and the prior works, and I'd use either lit maps or connected papers. Now they've both got their own positives and minuses. I really like lit maps and the way it's kind of laid out. You get control over the X, Y axis, and I just like it overall as a kind of, um, as a way to navigate the papers. But if I am needing something just like super quick and dirty, I do like to put in a paper and these two buttons really make a huge difference into searching. So I want derivative works a lot of the times and I can see what has cited my seed paper. And I use that all the time, um, especially if I want to get up to date information. So I go on to elicit, I say, hey, um, I wanna know about this. It gives me a paper and I go, hmm, that's quite an old paper. I wonder what's been done since then. And I put it into something like lit maps or connected papers. And then I have a look to see what actually has happened in the field and what has been published. And it just makes it so much easier to find direction in the literature, find out the leading edge or from one seed paper. I love it. If you like this video, remember to go check out this one where I talk about AI enhanced writing. Writing maybe isn't something that you do every single day in research at the moment, so go check out that video for all of those extra things that you should know about. You have to try these for yourself. One thing that I say to every researcher is be aware of what tools are out there, give them a go, and don't be afraid of just saying, no, that's not for me. Or if you find one that is just so perfect, adopt it into your workflow. You have to build up your own toolkit. No one can say to you, hey, this is valuable, this isn't. You have to try them for yourself and see if the information and the extra kind of productivity boost these AI tools can give you are uh, actually worth it for your research. So you've been warned. That was what works for me. Try it for you. And I feel like most of you would get a lot from these particular AI tools. Thanks very much for watching. So let me know in the comments which ones you would add to this list. And as always, I read the comments and I love hearing about your experiences. Also, there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now and also go check out Academia in insider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebooks, I've got my resource pack, I've got my blog and the forum. Everything's there to make sure research works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.